we gather on the traditional territory of the Algonquin people. May we dwell on this land with respect and peace. Welcome to Worship in the Parish of Mississippi Lake, a parish of the Anglican Diocese of Ottawa, firmly planted in and around Lanark County. Worship this week comes to you from St. James Carlin Place, led by the Reverend Canon Christine Piper. Our preacher today will be myself, Archdeacon Brian Kauk. I will read from Mark's Gospel and offer the sermon. Our musician today is Ian Gannett. The prayers of the people are offered by Jeff Nugent, and Ian Parker is providing technical assistance. We listen now as God's word is proclaimed among us. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel, will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them, the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. There are some days when I'm quite sure God looks at us and says, you know, you are exactly what I'm looking for. You and I are going to change the world together. And then there are days when it's more like you're blocking the way forward. You need to step aside right now and get out of my way. And then maybe there are some days when it's one right after the other and you and I just can't tell the difference. Because Peter is having one of those days. It was literally just moments ago that Peter got it right. Jesus is asking on the way to the next village, who do people say that I am? And there are answers based on who his disciples know. They know the stories circulating about John the Baptist. They know the stories of old about Elijah. They know that the prophets from before had that sharp wit and keen insight that Jesus displays and the power of God on their side. And so people are saying, you're like one of those, Jesus. And you, what about you? Jesus asks. Peter stands up for his fellow disciples 
and speaks words that everybody wants to hear, but we're afraid to say. You are the Messiah. Now, the Messiah was to be God's anointed king. The Messiah would lead God's people just like King David did, taking the place of a corrupt king and leading the people not just into battle, but into a right relationship with God, a spiritual leader. The Messiah would free God's people as Moses did from the oppression of foreign powers. The Messiah would challenge empire and speak truth to power. The Messiah would be one on the side of God's people and bring everyone along for the ride. The Messiah would also be a healer, someone who would restore God's people to a rightful place in the community remove the impurities of illness, and use a healing touch as much as a firm hand. He would heal the community as a whole and drive out the impurity of corruption that always seems to worm its way into organized religion. And if we look at Jesus' ministry in Mark's gospel, well, it's pretty clear that Peter has been paying attention to what's going on. Jesus has spiritual authority, even over demons. Jesus heals and raises the sick and the nearly dead, and then the actual dead. Jesus is unafraid to confront the wrongs of both the temple establishment and the Roman Empire. If you've been waiting for the Messiah, Jesus is starting to shape up as the one you've been waiting for. So Jesus is the Messiah. And now we know what to do. We have a mission, a purpose, a direction. As far as Peter's concerned, it's go time. Not so fast, says Jesus, because here's what you don't know yet. Jesus teaches them that the one they've been waiting for will fail. The Messiah isn't going to win. He's going to lose. And he's going to lose big. The Son of Man. One like a human being, as Walter Wink puts it. The one who stands in the place of all humanity before God and is able to withstand God's judgment. The one you've been waiting for is going to undergo great suffering. Be rejected by anyone powerful who would join him. Be killed. And then, after three days, rise again. I'm not sure that last part made it through to Peter's brain. It just doesn't make sense. None of it does. And besides, why go through all that other stuff? Peter, who gets it so right, also gets it so wrong. He tries to pull Jesus aside and tell him to lay off. You're spooking people, Jesus. Who's going to follow us if you keep talking like that? I suppose that's maybe where Peter goes off the rails. When it becomes about preserving the messianic mission and the gains the Jesus movement has made, rallying the people, staying on brand with the message. A good disciple isn't afraid to tell his master when he's starting to slip. Nope. Looking at this the wrong way, Peter. You're in the way. Step aside. God's got other priorities than what you imagine 
to be the goal here. How do we know? How do we find the way? How do you and I know when we're on the right track and when we're just causing trouble? How do we know when we're right and when we're wrong? Because they sure seem muddled up sometimes. For Jesus and his disciples, and you know what, maybe this isn't for everyone, the cross forms the shape of our lives. We are told to pick up our cross and carry it where Jesus leads us. The cross Peter doesn't want to pick up and carry behind Jesus is the one where he loses. Where the messianic age doesn't kick out the Romans, restore the purity of the temple, and gather the people under one ruler. The cross presented to Peter is one where he doesn't win. The cross presented to the church today could very well be something that looks like an ending. Something that looks like throwing away that which we hold dear. What we have accumulated and brought along with us. And why on earth would we do that? Why would we even think about it? After three days, Jesus promises, he will rise again. The end of the story will justify turning away from one goal, which everyone wants, and accepting another, which almost nobody wants. I'll be very clear. I'm not suggesting we need to throw away everything we have and hold dear just to follow Jesus. Just mindlessly, blindly throwing everything away and starting over is not authentic martyrdom. It's just stupid. Most of what we have and hold is exactly what God has given us to preserve the mission of Jesus in the world, to be a sign and a foretaste of the inbreaking reign of God. But we need to lose that which holds us back from fully embracing the kingdom Jesus preached. Until we pick up the cross of racism, and how we play a part in perpetuating perpetuating racial injustice, we will never be able to lose the yoke of slavery. Until we pick up the cross of how we played a part in the suppression of indigenous culture and peoples, we will never lose the legacy of the residential school system. What I am suggesting is that the church needs to orient itself around a priority of things, human things and divine things. When human things are the priority, we lose our way. When we allow the things God really cares about to be the first priority, what we have becomes an asset, not an obstacle. When Jesus is willing to break any social convention or religious rule to restore just one of God's people to wholeness and community, his mind is one with God's mind. When the chief priests and religious authorities take him to task for breaking the Sabbath taboo, Jesus picks up his cross. When Jesus refuses to recant, even in the face of persecution and death, Jesus is crucified. When the resurrection of Jesus comes, Jesus wins. Life wins. That's the story that forms us as people of God. 
That's the way of Jesus' cross. To be willing to risk it all and lose it all so that God's vision of this world, this community, this people can win. Even when we lose, we win. That's the way. And nothing can get in the way of where Jesus is going, where we, as faithful disciples, will follow. Amen. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the words thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, Thy power throughout the universe displayed and sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shouts of abolition, and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then i shall bow in humble adoration and then proclaim my god how great thou art and sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the one holy Catholic and apostolic church throughout the world, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican church in Central America. In the Canadian cycle of prayer, we pray for the right Reverend John Organ, Bishop and the clergy and people of the Diocese of Western Newfoundland. In our diocese, we pray for Shane, our bishop, for the Anglican Fellowship of Prayer and Paul Dumbriel, Ottawa representative, and for all parish representatives, for all parish administrators in our diocese, for Martin Luther, Lutheran Church, and their pastor, Friedrich Demke. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy for those preparing for baptism, and for their teachers and sponsors, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For peace in the world, that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, and all who suffer, refugees, prisoners, 
and all in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Amen. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. God of our journey, as we walk with you on your path of obedience, sustain us on our way and lead us to your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord and now as our Saviour Christ has taught us, let us pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you have put your life into our hearts. Now we put our lives into your hands. Take us, renew us, and remake us. What we have been is past. What we shall be through you still awaits us. Lead us on. Take us with you. In your name we pray. May the God of mercy transform you by his grace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be to God. God. Thank you for joining us for worship today. We welcome you to join us again next week. You can find us on Facebook at the Parish of Mississippi Lake and at St. James Carlton Place. Visit our website www.stjamescarltonplace.ca for more information.